Hello everyone and welcome to the very first video in our Alex Kid and Shinobi World tutorial series. For this first lesson we're going to be covering what are called header files. Now up until now in all the tutorials previously we've always been putting everything in the main.c file. While we could in theory do that for this project too, when you're actually making a whole game you'll find that this main.c gets bigger and bigger until the point where it comes very um, too huge and unwieldy. Because of that, it's generally a good idea to split your program into different files. So for example, you have a set of files that deals with the player, a set of files that deals with the enemy, another set of files that deals with you know, loading the levels and so on. That's exactly what header files are designed for, and they are a general C programming language concept rather than anything specific to SGDK. However, before we start creating our own header files, there's a few things I need to cover about the project in general first. Now the version of SGDK we are beginning this project with is 2.11. To be honest this is something I wish I'd made clear in the very first tutorial video I did when I think we started on I think it was uh, SGDK 1.65 because uh, in subsequent that was three years ago and since then there's been some minor changes to not major changes but just superficial changes to the syntax so some of the tutorials I did then if someone goes into the project, goes into learning SGDK and Mega Drive Dev using the latest version of SGDK. Uh, some of the um, some of the syntax is slightly changed. I did go through previously and just add some notes, pin notes to each tutorial that was affected and uh, but it keeps updating all the time. So I think in now I'm going to I'm gonna put a pin comment on that very first video and just tell people to start from I think it was SGDK 1.65 instead. So for those people who are watching this in the future, maybe in 2030, when we have you know SGDK uh, 4.6 with full tower of power, mega CD and 32x support, uh, just a reminder for this tutorial series, just start on SGDK 2.11 and I will put a link to that version in the video description. And as a quick aside, I noticed while filming this that the um, playlist for the tutorials is now over 100,000 views, which is not what I expected. I don't generally keep an eye on this sort of stuff on YouTube, so that's a nice surprise. So a big congratulations and thank you to your support for anyone who's still sticking with the tutorials up to today. Actually, while we're on the topic of the tutorials playlist, um, in these future Alice Kid tutorials, I'm not going to go through lots of the stuff that we've already covered in those tutorials in detail this time. So for, for example, when putting a, a sprite on the screen or putting a background on the screen or scrolling or anything else we've already covered in previous tutorials, when that topic comes up, I'm just gonna do it very quickly. I'm not gonna explain every move I do because we've already covered it. So if you've forgotten and it happens to me too, I often have to look back at my own tutorials when I forget to do something very simple even that I haven't done for a long time. Feel free to look back in that um, in that playlist and just to remind you, refresh yourself on how to do it and what each variable means and so on for these SGDK functions. And I don't want to slow this project down too much. For this project, where I'm going to go, place I'm going to go slow are the uh, stuff we haven't studied before. So, for example, today on the header files programming and so on. Okay, just another couple of quick things before we finally start on our header files. If you're updating SGDK now, don't forget that you may need to delete this boot folder, otherwise you get some errors when you try to compile. So you can delete, you can save and recompile, and then a new boot folder will be generated for you. Another little problem that I've noticed a lot of people have in the, from the comments in some of the videos is when the IntelliSense stops working. Just as a reminder, the IntelliSense is when you start typing in an SGDK function, it guesses which ones you want to use and it gives a description and so on, so it's very useful to have. If after starting a new project, you find that it suddenly stops working, then the issues probably resides in these JSON files. If you are having this problem, then simply go to an old project where the IntelliSense was working, go to the settings.json file and copy the contents and paste it into the settings file here. You can also use the settings file to change uh, how Visual Studio Code works. Um, I haven't really found that many settings that are very useful. Uh, for any advanced users, you can let me know if there's anything you think I should change here. But uh, just to give you an example, we have this, I think it's called breadcrumbs here, so uh, you can uh, add this in and it just pretty much gets rid of the little file tree at the very top here just like makes it look neater although it doesn't make much difference when you click a control s save you'll see it disappear here so it's not a big deal but for this project i think i'm gonna just set that to full so that it doesn't you know take up real estate on our screen here and please note that this isn't using C programming language, it's a different language. Um, if you want, you can search JSON on YouTube and you can find plenty of tutorials on how to use it, but I'm not gonna go into it in detail today. 
Okay, so now let's get into the meat of the lesson. And we'll start off this template here. You can get rid of all these uh, display text functions. We're not going to need those. You can save and compile. And the first thing we're going to do, as we do with any new file, we want to start loading the resources into it. And today we're going to put a sprite on the screen. And normally we'll put resources.res here, but today I'm going to do something a bit different. Since we're going to be loading lots of different assets into our game, we're going to have the player sprite and also the sub weapons, enemies, backgrounds, music, and so on. Rather than having everything in one single resources.res file, I think we should split it up and we should create lots of .res files instead. Since this one's going to contain our player sprite and other player related things, I've called it res underscore player.res. If at this point I save and compile, you'll see that SGDK automatically creates another file for us, a res underscore player.h. You don't need to change anything within this file, it's all fine, but I just want to give you a quick look at the syntax used because it's similar to what we're going to use in our own header files when we create them later. The sprite we're going to be putting into our game today is this single Alex Kid sprite, and of course Ray Cassetto did the work here, so thanks to him. You can see that we have two colours spare out of our 16 colour palette, and those two I think I'm going to reserve for shadow and highlight mode because when Alex dies in the original you notice he goes to a ghost. I think it'd be nice if that ghost could be transparent so I don't think we're going to need these extra two colours so we can save them for shadow and highlight mode and if you remember the shadow and highlight lesson the, you need to use PAL3 if you want to use shadow and highlight mode in any sprite so that's what we're going to assign to the player sprite. Instead of dropping that PNG asset directly into the res folder as we'd normally do, instead I'm going to create another folder within that folder and we're going to call it for example um, player assets or whatever name you like. I'm then going to place that Alex sprite within that folder. So now within the res folder we also have this player SX folder and within that folder we have the Alex sprite. This is going to affect how we upload our asset within the res file. Whereas we would normally write it like this if the asset was dropped directly into the res folder, since it's put within a folder within that folder, we're going to have to update the file path. If we now save and compile, everything should be fine. Just as with resources.res, if we want to use this um, asset within our main.c, we're going to have to include it at the very top. However, please pay attention to the syntax because it's different from resources.res. Instead of putting resources.h with the uh, arrow brackets around it, we do uh, res underscore player.h with the um, quotation marks around it instead. To prepare to put our sprites into the game, I'm just doing this regular code that we've already covered before. So we're setting the resolution to 256 like the original, and we're also setting up the sprite engine. We make it set up at the very beginning, then we're going to make sure it updates as we go along within our game loop. To put our sprite in the game, I need to add these three lines of code. So first we define the sprite, then we set up the palette, and then finally we add the sprite. And again, if you need to remind yourself what's happening here, just check back into the previous lessons on how to add a sprite. So Alex looks fine there, so our code is working, but instead of having these several lines of code to do one thing, uh, let's instead create a function, a create player function, and then we can put those that code within that function instead. So I'm creating the function prototype up here. I've actually put it into the wrong place. It needs to be above main, but uh, we'll do that. We'll correct that in a second. And then remember below is where we actually put the body of the function, i.e. what's going to be doing in the function. So in this case, we're defining the palette and we're adding the sprat. So we have the name of the function here and now I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut it and I'll put it up to the very top of our file main.c just where we defined our sprite earlier. Now that we've created the function of course we need to call it within our game. Now the, the way we're going to be calling it within where the main brackets are so before the game loop because we don't want to have it repeated all the time we want to just create the player once the same time we set the resolution so we have that at the very beginning and we leave the game loop as it is. And again, we've created functions before in previous tutorials, so should this all be familiar to you? If not, then just refer back to those. If we now save and compile, we should get the same result as before, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so Alex looks fine here, so it looks like our function's working correctly. But instead of having all this within our main.c, we, we need to instead take the next step and put this into its own header file. In the folder called inc, I want you to right click and I want you to create a new file called player.h. In that file, we're going to write this code here. Now, don't worry too much about what each line means. This is basically the same code we put into every header file we create. And if you check back into that h file, that the resources.h file, that SGDK will create automatically for us, you can see that the syntax is very similar. Only this time, we have to do it manually. Basically, the purpose of this boilerplate code is to prevent the same function or variable being included within our program multiple times. 
For example, this player.h header file, we're going to link it in a moment to main.c, but in future we all may, may also link it to uh, you know the enemy header file so I can interact back and interact with enemies we might link it with the level creation header file because we need to when we're loading levels and so if we were not to have this code then the functions we're creating inside it and the player sprite may be included within the program many times and you'll create lots of bugs and errors however so long as we define any functions and any uh, variables within in between these bits of code here in this little gap here then that won't happen it'll be fine the compiler will make sure that if it's already included once it won't include it a second or third time and if you're still a little bit confused, don't worry, we're going to be doing a similar thing with enemies next week in the next lesson. So uh, you'll get plenty of practice and it'll be like second nature soon. Just as with our other files, we're going to need to include genesis.h so we can use sgdk functions in this file as well. For these include lines of code, um, I like to put them in between where we have the, um, the, the two pieces of code we have to prevent replication. As you can see in the previous uh, file, the res file that SGDK created for us, they actually have that at the very top. So I don't think it matters, but it's just something I do. It seems to work both ways, so don't worry about it too much. Okay, let's now go back to main.c and start taking the player related stuff and transferring it to a header file instead. So we're going to need to take this um, sprite definition here as well as this include because we're going to be using the Graph assets asset within player.h, so it needs to be linked to that file too. Okay, now let's go to main.c and cut the uh, player sprite definition. We're going to paste that into player.h2. Again, make sure it's in between the two lines of code at the top and the one at the very bottom, so it doesn't get duplicated over multiple files. Now, for most things, it's going to go into these header files. We need to put extern before the main definition. Now, this is just short for external. It means we're going to be using it outside of the header file. And uh, even if we, we pretty much have to do this every time when we don't need to do it, I'll let you know. But for now, just pretty much when we're defining either a, a variable or a sprite or, you know, a, a function, we're always going to put extern in front of it when we're putting it into this uh, h file. Speaking of functions, we're going to need to take that function prototype from main to top of main.c and paste that into our header file too. And while we're at it, let's delete that include because we've already got it included in the uh, player.h. So we're not going to need to put it in again here for main.c. And again, just as with our sprite, we're going to put the word extern just at the very beginning of this. We're going to go once again back to the main.c file and we're going to cut that the actual function itself from the very bottom. But instead of putting it in there, our h file, we're actually going to create a corresponding C file called player.c and we're going to create it within the src folder, the same folder as main.c. Pretty much every single H file, header file we create is going to have its own corresponding C file of the same name but .c instead of .h. Whereas in the H file we create the definitions for the functions and various variables and, and arrays and so on. It's in the C file where we actually write the details, we actually assign value to them. Or in this case of the function where we actually say what the function does. First of all we need to link the file so we're going to write a player.h here within the quotation marks. We can now go ahead and we can paste that cut function from our main.c file. And please note that we only have to add the extern word to the a function definition within the h file we don't need to do it for this c file from player.h we also need to copy that player sprite over the definition of the player sprite and again we don't need the extern we just need to copy the name The final thing we need to do is to take the include player.h from player.c and we copy it. We don't cut it, we still need it to be in player.c, so let's copy it. And we put it at the very top of the uh, main.c, just under where it says genesis.h. This means that these two files are now linked, so it will recognize any functions that we take from uh, player.h and player.c and we use in main.c. For example, we're going to use this create player function. Just while we're here in player.c, let's just change the uh, parameters or where the addict sprite is going to appear on the screen just so you know you know that we're using a different ROM now, we're compiling a different ROM so it should appear near the bottom now so let's save and compile and see how it looks. Okay so there is at the bottom so everything's working fine so now instead of having lots of code within our main.c we've instead put it into our header file and the corresponding c file instead. 
while this might not be such a big deal at the moment because we're only using a few lines of code anyway, uh, in futures we add more and more stuff to different lessons for enemies and levels and so on. We're eventually going to end up with lots of code and it's better if we keep main.c nice and small and neat and just as the saying go goes, all roads lead to Rome and ultimately all files will be linked to main.c but it's good to keep it nice and small and organized and we're going to put different pieces of code in their corresponding h and c files. If this is your first time using header files and you're a little bit confused, don't worry. Um, the actual code used itself is quite ugly, I think. All this boilerplate code we have to use every time we create a header file, then we have to create a corresponding C file, and the way it's linked together is a bit... Um, it's not the most beautiful code, but it's just the way that C programming language works. And But we're going to, do, we're going to be doing this many times over the next few weeks, so you'll, it'll be second nature after a while. For example, in the next lesson, we're going to add some enemies to our program and we're going to create an enemy header file with the corresponding C file and the corresponding resource files too. So after next week I think you'll feel a lot more comfortable so if you're confused right now don't worry about it too much you'll get used to it soon enough. Okay so that'll do for this lesson thanks very much for watching. If you're interested in this type of content don't forget to subscribe. I'm interested in this. And if you're interested in supporting my work further then I have a Patreon channel with lots of uh, goodies and downloadable code as well as early demos of stuff I'm working on and any support is much appreciated. You won't go unrewarded. Until next time. Farewell.